Hi, it's Bimarzen with another video and this time I will be diagnosing a yellow oil warning light on my dashboard on my new daily driver. This is the E46 compact BMW with N42 engine inside. So in this video I will diagnose the issue and I'm also going to talk about how the oil level sensor works on this particular engine and I'm also going to talk about how the oil warning light works on the E46 models. So let's get into the video. I'm now inside of the car and I'm going to turn on the engine and show you the yellow warning light for the oil level. And here it is. It uh, goes on a couple of seconds after you start the engine and then it shuts off. So let's talk about how the oil level sensor is displayed on the dashboard. So the red warning light for the oil means oil pressure and if it turns on then it means that the oil pressure is not present. These engines they only have on or off sensor like a switch so you don't get an actual reading of the pressure you just get pressure on or pressure off reading. The second mode is the yellow light and the yellow light is indicating the oil level. So uh, if the oil level is too low, the yellow light will appear on the dashboard. The next indication for the yellow light is uh, when it is displayed. If it is displayed 30 seconds after you shut off the engine, then you have an actual low level for the oil. So you should definitely check and top up the oil. But if the warning light comes in after you start the engine, that means that there is a sensor malfunction. So in my case, I can see that the oil light goes on after I start the engine, which means I have a sensor issue. So it's not an oil level issue, it's actual sensor issue. Now these sensors are uh, quite smart, quote unquote. So they are digital sensors and they produce square signal and based on that signal the DME can determine the state of the oil. So it is a thermal oil sensor which means that it heats up the oil and then it measures how much time it took for the oil to get up to the temperature and how much time it took for the oil to reach lower temperature. So uh, it has some sort of uh, hysteresis going on and based on that data the ECU can then look into the maps for the engine and uh, adjust the engine operation based on the oil condition. If the sensor is not working, the ECU will use default map and the engine will not run optimally. So the ECU definitely needs data for the oil temperature and oil level you should not underestimate the power or implication of a bad oil level sensor. So with some theory behind us, we can now proceed by scanning the car for codes. So I have my laptop here and it is connected uh, via cable and I have my IMPA software opened. So now I'm going to turn on the ignition and uh, now we're going to check error memory and I have a couple of errors already present and this is the error that we are interested in. It is uh, 27C3 CDKTOENS signal level sensor. So if we take a look here in the error description we can see signal abgefallen, that means that the signal is uh, wrong. So this means that there's definitely something wrong 
with the oil level sensor. So we have to check the connection and we have to check if uh, there's some oil on the connectors because that could be our issue. Sometimes uh, you get a signal implausible error and when you get that it means that the data that the sensor is uh, providing to the ECU is out of range. So with that it's best to lift up the car and uh, check the connection to the sensor. I'm now underneath the car and uh, the oil level sensor is located right here underneath this reinforcement plate and straight away we can see that there's a lot of oil down there. Now how did that oil get there? Well one possibility is that the gasket on the sensor itself is bad and that's why it's leaking. Another option would be that we have some other oil leak and since this is pretty much the lowest part of the engine all the oil pulls on the sensor and on the connector and this could be our issue. So the first step is to remove this reinforcement plate and clean out the connector and see if that helps. Removing the reinforcement plate is easy, just remove all of the 16 millimeter bolts. Nasty. I'll have to clean this off. So we have access to the sensor now and check this out. It's full of oil. So now we have to disconnect this. We have to squeeze two tabs and it could be stuck a little bit. I'll have to wiggle it out. So I had to use my both hands off camera to release the connector and as you can see it's uh, full of oil. Now it's time to use some brake clean. Let's reconnect the connector. Okay we're back in the car. Let's see if we have any uh, improvement. So far so good. Let's try again. Okay, we still have the error. So it's probably not the connector. Let's check again the error with IMPA. I'm going to clear errors and let's read them again. And we still have an issue with the sensor. Okay, let's uh, connect the new sensor and see if this error goes away. Let's disconnect the old sensor and I'm going to connect brand new sensor. This sensor is uh, from Hila and you can see that it's identical to the original sensor. You can even see where the BMW's logo and the part number was uh, grinded off the sensor. So this one is still as good as the original but it is uh, like 60% of the price of the original. So uh, I recommend going with the Hela sensors for these applications. Don't buy cheap sensors from eBay and stuff like that. Any Chinese stuff, they will not work. I mean, I had a case where I bought a fake sensor and I installed it and the warning light went away. But when I checked with IMPA, it turned out that uh, there were still internal error, but the oil light was off. So all that sensor did was shut off the warning light and it didn't actually do anything. So don't mess around with uh, sensors on BMWs. And let's see if we get a different result in IMPA. So if the oil level sensor is not installed in the engine, it's gonna throw a different error. But at least then we'll know that the connection to the sensor itself is uh, working properly and that the original sensor is the culprit. Start the engine. Let's see what happens. So no warning light so far. Let's try again. Still no warning light. Okay, let's check the IMPA. 
Let's clear errors first. And then we read. And this time we don't have any errors. So uh, this basically tells us that the original sensor that is installed right now is bad and we should go ahead and replace that oil level sensor right now. To remove the sensor we first have to drain the oil. The oil is almost drained so I'm going to put back the plug and I'm going to torque it to 25 newton meters. Now let's remove the sensor. We have three 10 millimeter nuts. Next we have to clean the surface. Make sure that there's no debris here. And now we install the new sensor. Torque the nuts to 8 newton meters. Reconnect the sensor, make sure that it clicks. And next you just have to reinstall the aluminium reinforcement plate and the front splash shield. And you have to torque the bolts to 59 newton meters plus 90 degrees. And it should be good to go underneath. Now we have to put back oil and I'm going to use 5W30 with long life 04 specification. Filter replaced, all the O rings replaced. Make it hand tight. Back in the car, let's start the engine. So far so good, no oil light, let's check for errors. So far so good, no errors. So I think that our oil light problem is now fixed. I hope that this video was useful for you and if you have N42 or N46 engine on the E46 platform you can check out my other videos, there are plenty of other useful information about this engine and repair procedures. So thanks for watching, consider subscribing and uh, keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.